Hi, Fandre. Hello, Miss Nina. I have missed hearing your voice in the two most recent lessons. I hope you have been listening to Ms. Hester van Schoenberg explaining the process of finalizing the portfolio. Yes, I've been listening to her. I've made notes. I'm not one of those, if there are any learners like that, who have fallen behind. I've been too scared. I wanted to know and write down everything. But I think I'm starting to get it now. I feel almost ready for the final exam. That is great to hear, Fandre. But before we start with today's lesson, I would like to welcome all our art and design learners, students, teachers, art lovers and anybody else listening to this lesson. But I've also looked forward to telling you my latest jokes, miss. There are a few I think you don't know yet. Really? Try me. What did the artist say when people said his painting was terrible? Oh, I don't know. What did he say? Nothing. He got the picture. <laughs> What else have you got? Get it all off your chest so we can get serious. Okay. What do artists draw before retiring to bed? The curtains? <laughs> <laughs> sure, and? <laughs> mm, what does a painter do when he feels cold? Nope. What? He puts on a... <laughs> Another coat! <laughs> okay, now I have one for you. When do artists take things too far? No, I don't know, miss. When they don't know where to draw the line. But we do, and so we draw a line under the jokes and get into our final discussion to prepare you and other learners like yourself for the final art and design examination and your portfolio. Can we please discuss the guidelines for our coursework? That's what I'm currently going through. Yes, Van Rey, that is exactly what we will be discussing today. The guidelines were especially written to help our learners complete their artwork correctly. As you know, all candidates must submit a coursework portfolio showing all the planning, all the recordings, exploration, experimentation, <sighs> Processes, developing and refining ideas towards the final piece according to the chosen topic. My goodness, this is a mouthful. <laughs> I'm also out of ears just listening to everything we had to do. Yes, it should be a portfolio that shows step by step how I came up with my ideas, which artists inspired me and how I developed my work into a one final outcome or art piece. So, yes, you know what to do. Kind of, but I'm not confident I'm doing the right things. Well, we want to encourage all AS level learners, before you even start working on your art piece, you must sit with your teacher and discuss your idea. You and the teacher must do some brainstorming on how you can take your ideas and develop them, experiment and explore with different views on the idea. This step is really important, as the teacher can guide you to think of different types of media, methods and possible good display methods and ideas for your artwork. I can surely do with some help in thinking about the deeper message, which all my art should communicate. Yes, things like that. I wanted to ask Miss, what if I wanted to make a sculpture which is six feet tall? Yeah, Van Rooy. Are you just asking or are you really planning to do this? This is one important aspect to discuss with your teacher. You have to talk about what is doable in the four months which you have in this year. A sculpture might be too much to complete within the given time, but a smaller or drawn version of your statue might be achievable. There is also the risk of packing and transporting a sculpture of six feet high. Sure, what if it breaks? Okay, so maybe I make a smaller one now and one day when I'm famous, I have more time, I can take the smaller version and make it into a six foot statue. Sure, who knows? Maybe when you are famous, you can make a huge statue for our presidential home. I'll remember that. Now I have a question for a friend. He asked me to ask here if Elena wants to make something like a bridge or an interesting architectural building. Then the same principle and risks would apply. He would not be able to make it full size. 
he should discuss with his teacher how to make it smaller in terms of the scale and ratio. Remember, you learners must be able to complete it in the space of just a few months. If you do make something enormous like a bridge or building, in art and design it is called construction, then it is better to take photographs of it from all the different angles and submit that with your portfolio to DNA for assessment. This is a difficult question to ask, ma'am. But what if I don't like the teacher's idea? You do not have to like her ideas. He or she is simply giving guidance on technical requirements of the artwork. It is absolutely your artwork. It will be something representing your mind, your emotions and your message. If you do not like your teacher's suggestions, create a different idea about something you feel passionate about. Or discuss your idea with your teacher until you come to an agreement. Remember, the teacher also needs to guard the gate to the examiners, meaning they have an idea what the examiners might like and not like, so at least listen to what your teacher says. You cannot produce an artwork which could be offensive to someone, which may cause them to eventually give you a poor symbol. Your teacher wants you to do your best. He or she will try to give you the best advice possible for you to achieve your best. A good symbol can open doors to you for further studies. It can even already begin to establish a name for yourself as an artist. How many pages should the portfolio be? 6, 8, 2 or A3 pages will be enough to indicate all the research, planning, development and experimentation of your ideas. Use both sides of the papers to have a well-produced portfolio. And what is the cut-off date when my preparation for the coursework should be completed? Yes, target dates are very important here. You will need to set completion dates for everything and stick to them. Otherwise, you might not finish on time. Or you will rush towards the end and you will be unhappy with your final product. A good guideline is for all your research, planning, experimentation and development to be completed by the end of Term 1. You can use the holidays and the beginning of Term 2 to complete your final product. But remember, once you start with your examination preparation, you will not have time for your coursework. By then it should be completed and sent to DNEA for assessment. Yeah, there's no time to play, but at least the research and experimentation is also enjoyable. To me at least. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Especially experimentation can be a lot of fun. You have to think about each stage of your coursework as an adventure. Do you remember our trip to the island of Nduluka? Oh, of course. That was so much fun. Oh, I see what you are telling me. Even things that are unfamiliar or hard to do at first are an exploration. It is the fun I want it to be. Well, Fandre, I very much look forward to seeing your artwork and sending it to the examiners. Actually, I can hardly wait. I know I'll be so proud of you. I hope I'll make you proud, Miss Nina. You've been an excellent art and design teacher to me, and you have been patiently guiding me on this last part of the journey as well. Oh dear, now I feel tears coming. <coughs> Come on, you can do this. Van Roy is going to be okay. And so are all the Namibian AS art and design learners. <laughs> they will work on time, research properly, write down everything and explore the invisible world for deeper meaning and create meaningful art that works to share with the world. I know that. Miss Nina, did you hear about the still life painting? It was not moving at all. <laughs> oh yes, Fandre, yes, because it was a still life painting, right? Right. Did you hear about the artist that was murdered? The police suspected the drawing because it looked really sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, such wordplay. Well done, Fandre. But thanks, I feel better now. And you should go home and apply all your coursework guidelines. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye, Fandre, and goodbye to all our art and design AS level learners who have been listening and making notes with us. This was the final lesson in our five-part series. We hope other listeners have also found our visual arts lessons interesting. 
Thank you too to Ms. Marianina van Deventer, who wrote the lessons in this series, and others in the NAMCO team, who improved on them, including the program developer in charge of curriculum and materials development, Ms. Tangi Shifeni. Our offsite script editor is Lynette Smit. A huge thank you to Ms. Karen Kutsia, our script editor. Our lovely Ms. Esther van Schoenberg, the expert in the subject, and van Roy, our learner who asked so many questions. Please remember, NAMCO has many more radio lessons that can help you brush up on exciting school topics in your grade. Check out our website www.youtube.com slash c slash namcoedu1. All that's left for me to say is all the best with your exams. Bye! This lesson is produced by Namcol with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture.